about the Cambodian story. Okay? And we talk about the Cambodian story, first of all, by Debbie Kravitz seeing her, her uh, football play. Okay? And so <laughs> this football, we wanted to throw it around for about six people to get a little Gary, who is the person in Cambodia who is the overseer for the working Cambodian. Now the purpose of this, okay, you get to know the Gary. The purpose of this is because it shows the idea that we're all interconnected, that we all give and we receive. Uh, and we all give and receive, and it's that combination of giving and receiving. Uh, and if possible, throwing the tight spiral, giving something precise and receiving something well, uh, that we see a great thing happen for God. And so we're going to be talking about the Cambodian Hope Worldwide Boston Church of Christ story, which has been going on for 20 years and has been truly an ongoing miracle and has involved, I think, practically every person sitting in this audience today and has inf influenced the entire globe. So that we're going to do this by, uh, 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 okay, 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do this by a series of 10 questions, okay? And uh, I'll, Debbie's give the questions and I'll do the answers, okay? So why did we get involved in the Cambodian hospital work? Oh, just like we were talking about before with Valder, just, just your natural fit. Uh, I was a doctor, my son was a medical student, and Graham Gumley, a doctor, hand surgeon, was then the, uh, the director of the hospital, and he said, how about coming over? So we said, yes. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so why did we continue to go uh, a dozen times over the next 15 years? Once we went, we saw that something was really happening amazingly in, in Cambodia. There is something about going a second time to a place where you're trying to serve. People are connected. We're connected with the people. Hearts are, are made one and all. And there's a sense of, of ongoing connectedness that was so important. Wow. So why did so many other contributors uh, join forces with the hospital? The, uh, the, the fact is that something miraculous was taking place almost at the beginning. It was started by, without any money, and in a short time frame, about six weeks to get a hospital going. That's, that's about 20 years ago. Uh, and, and yet, because of the hearts of the volunteers, ran by disciples, the church, there was a church that was, it was developing, there was a school, a, ro a, a school that was being formed, which was outstanding, and there were many needs being met. The Global Fund saw that this situation was amazing because of the integrity of the hospital, and they gave a grant of $5 million to help with the development of treatment for HIV uh, and TB. Uh, that was, was not done by HIV antiviral drugs, uh, which is so critical. And then uh, it just spread. So other, the, the USAID said, we, we need to also get involved in this. And they donated a, a radiology suite. They invoked a, a ultrasound machine and more recently a CAT scan, which is one of the very first in the country. And also during this time, because part of the mission of the hospital was not only to deliver medical care, high quality, free of charge, but also to train other medical professionals because there were only five doctors left in a country of 12 million people after the Khmer Rouge left. Wow. So, and when this happened, a thousand medical professionals, all the way from medical assistants to, radi to radiology techs, to individuals in the laboratory, to doctors who graduated under, under Gary, uh, were, were, were trained for the country. So how did Hopes for Hope get involved in this? Now, as, as, as Douglas mentioned last night, this was, this is really a great partnership because we had that, that walk at uh, Hopkinton and it, and, it, and it was less than ideal, but it was a start. And all these things start with a start. And, uh, and so Douglas and Ken said, well, I think we can do better. So we moved to the Franklin Park. We continued the, the walk. And with the walk, uh, 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 Phil Arsenal said, I think we can do better than that. Mm -hmm. And so then you had the, the, the Hoops for Hope that was started, uh, mainly because of the fact that it would inspire uh, men and women uh, to participate. And also the very fact when you reach out to the community, if you're playing basketball for 24 hours, that says something that this is a dedicated group of people that have a great cause and they raised $1,000 per person. And so began the whole area. 
so that uh, the last year it was $72,000 that we were able to collect, but also it brought in the Cambodian community. So why did this become so successful in Lowell and why was it brought to Lowell? Come on. Okay, one of, the, one of the keys in all of this is the fact that when the Hoops for Hope was started, it also invited basketball players from the Cambodian community to join in who were interested in basketball. When, uh, that was very important that Jay Grasso was really a champion in all of this, to be able to connect with Sonny Sock and so much so that, uh, that the, it became uh, because of the fact that it involved the, the Cambodian community. Okay, good. Okay. So why has the effort spread to bring awareness to over 40,000 Cambodians in the local community? Okay, so as the, as the Cambodian athletes were playing, they also said, we have to do something as a community for Lowell. And uh, this past year, for example, that uh, we had the third uh, fundraiser, 430 People from the community, mostly Cambodians, showed up at a large restaurant that was all planned by the Cambodian community. Uh, $12,000 was coll collected. You had the mayor there. You had the city council members. You had state representatives. You had political figures. And you had previous mayors who, who came. And you had the speakers. Phil was able to speak. Gary was able to speak. And as a result of that, we, uh, it, it brought together the, the, the community. And then, of course, with the Hoops for Hope became Teen Hoops for Hope. Now, uh, our young people, they loved it. Uh, the Teen Hoops for Hope, it was exciting, it was meaningful, it was challenging, it was exhausting, yeah. and, the same, and it was fun all at the same time. And uh, so that became a great part of building a sense of, of reaching out toward the community by fundraising. And why did the uh, Lowell General Hospital uh, have a sister, begin a sister hospital relationship with the Sihanouk Hospital? Now there's one hospital and, 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 and two campuses in, Low, in Lowell. Lowell's the Low, fourth largest city in, in Massachusetts. Uh, and uh, the, the, uh, a doctor who had gone over there, Jewish guy, uh, he went over twice, he was enthralled with Cambodia. He says, we have to do something, we get back. So he says, why, why not form a sister hospital relationship? Well, I was on the hospital staff, my son was on the hospital staff, and I was the doctor for the CEO of the hospital. So we just went to, to, to Norm, and we said, Norm, uh, uh, and, uh, and there were 40,000 Cambodians living in, in, uh, in the city of Lowell. And they said, absolutely, we're on. And so he put in charge the, the chief operating officer for the whole project. And from that came also a, a number of, of things. We have five doctors that have gone over to Cambodia over the last year from the, from the Lowell General Hospital. So what have been some of the results over the past 20 years? Okay, the, the, the results are really astounding. Uh, consider this from the point of view of Cambodia. The, Gary's been over there, he, he was the hospital director for five years. And get to, get to meet Gary because he's here because uh, there's many opportunities and there's many needs in Cambodia. But the one thing is that 1.4 million people have received free medical care in Cambodia that they would, no, they would not have received. Amen. There are two hospitals, there are three clinics, there are five churches, uh, and they are planting new ones. There's one premier school which was established as the second best ho uh, school in the entire country, the Goldstone School. More than $300,000 have been collected through the Hoops for Hope activities and involve so many people and the community. Uh, it has a $10 million budget, which it has to sustain over that period of time to fund these various, because medicine is, is expensive. Yeah. Uh, the HIV program, the TB program, which started at the Siena Hospital in Cambodia, then was morphed into the national program, which received from the United Nations uh, the uh, number one ranking, Cambodia received the number one ranking in the world for third world countries in the treatment of HIV and TB. Wow. Lowell General Hospital has sent over not only the physicians but also a $40,000 ultrasound machine to be used dedicated to point of care testing of, uh, of disease in the emergency department so that early diagnosis can be taken, can have, take place. 
In addition to that, uh, and, and concurrent with this, has been the Asian Water Festival, in which we have 60 to 80,000 Asians in the Lowell community once a year in, in August meet together. And we have, Hope has had a booth there for the last seven years. And uh, this has been a phenomenal thing. And this year alone, we have had three baptisms from the Hope Cambodian work in, Lo in, in our region, in Lowell. Amen. Ruin, and then there was uh, Siha Im, and just three weeks ago, and through the work of uh, the Reba family group, uh, through Carlton Burke, uh, another person was baptized who was actually volunteering for the booth. Amen. So the fruit is there, three people. Last question, what are the lessons to us as Christian professionals? Okay, I think there are three lessons that came to mind. It says, first of all, to whom much is given, much is expected. Yeah. Luke uh, 12 and 48, Jesus said, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. Mm. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. See your role in, in the God-given trust and use it in your area of expertise and influence. It's the theme, I think, that we have tried to emphasize here. Yeah. Number two, <clears throat> the, the best is always accomplished when those in the ministry and those working for the poor are unified, yeah. mutually respectful, and seeing the need and value of each other. Amen. This is amply illustrated in the Cambodian story. Amen. And thirdly, the journey, once begun, will need to innovate, change course as circumstances and conditions change, maintain the spiritual focus, embrace the need of many contributors and new partnerships, and see God's hand in it all. So that's, uh, that's the, uh, the Cambodian story in brief. I would like to have you uh, look at the, the handout that was given so that you think about how that might personally involve you, not necessarily in Cambodia, but in the, the theme of starting off small, of building with many partnerships, of seeing miracles take place, of being thankful to God, uh, of realizing the ministry and the work for the poor go hand in hand, and, and seeing millions of people being benefited by this, and other millions being inspired by it. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen.